Hello, I'm Brenda Shavito, and welcome to You Are Not Alone, the place for news, tips, and stories of hope for people battling the disease of addiction. Today's show will shine a spotlight on a topic very personal to me. We're going to discuss grieving the loss of a child or loved one from overdose. Some of you may know that we lost our son Nicholas to an accidental overdose in January of 2018. Unfortunately, these tragedies are happening way too often in our society, especially now with the uptick of COVID-19 cases that are continuing to plague our country. I feel this topic is an important discussion as it is complicated. It is like any other loss that parents and families can experience, survive, and learn to live with. After Nick passed, I was fortunate to connect with a grief group that focuses specifically on this type of loss. This is where I met my guest for today's show, Nancy King. Nancy is a licensed therapist who has been in practice for over 30 years. She has worked in a variety of settings, including mental health, as well as substance abuse recovery and rehabilitation. In 1999, Nancy was one of the founding members of the Emmaus Group, which is a local grief group that services churches in the Phoenixville area. In 2017, she became the facilitator for a more focused group titled, For Jonathan's Sake, Beyond a Broken Heart, sponsored by Steps for Hope. Nancy has been in private practice for over 10 years and continues to provide counseling services to people suffering from addiction. She's here with me today to talk about what makes this loss different, more complex, the steps of grief, and what we can do to navigate through this journey in a healthy way and continue to live, not to just exist. Nancy, thank you so much for mm -hmm. being here today. I really appreciate you coming in to speak with us. Yeah. Um, and you know, not to ever downgrade the loss of any child due to any circumstances, but let's start out with talking about what makes uh, the loss due to substance abuse um, disorder different than other deaths of a child? Um, they're different because of the circumstances that the parents carry with them. And our group is specifically geared toward parents who have lost children to addiction. And there's, um, sometimes there's a shame and there's um, an isolation that comes with having a child that has died that way. Uh, we don't talk about it, there's a stigma behind it, and that's what keeps people so close, closed off. Mm -hmm. uh, but in our group you can come and you can share those feelings, you can talk about whatever it is that's been on your mind, and other people in the group can understand with compassion, not with judgment. Right, right. Yeah. I, I, I understand that my, for myself, yeah. uh, there was always that stigma mm -hmm. when Nick was alive. Um, you know, not wanting to talk about it. Mm. Pe other people just, and I couldn't expect them to understand. They mm. just didn't understand. Um, and, and it's a long, it's a long, long time in many cases that mm. you carry that yeah. stigma. But there is, there is uh, a lot of change happening. We were talking last night about how 20, 25 years ago, you would never talk about uh, things like that. But now people are starting to open up. You're mm -hmm. seeing more information about drugs and, and alcohol. People are understanding the disease better. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the shame stays with the, with the person. Mm -hmm. But once they start to open up, mm -hmm. uh, then they see a freer conversation. And they can feel better about themselves and better about their child. Right. Better about their child. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's... Unfortunately, I think because of the numbers and mm. because of the incidence mm. of this horrible disease taking mm. so many lives, mm. um, that I think there's so many in our society that are are touched by it. Yes. And mm. before, there always used to be whispering when it when there was a funeral, like it was never talked about, yes. and mm. you know there was like this undercurrent that 
either the person may have taken their own life or mm -hmm. there was a, a case where there was overdose. Right, yeah. So it wasn't uh, yeah. as, as obvious. Yeah, but people are, t are very much now speaking up about it because they want us to find help for our children. Sure. Uh, it's been such a mystery how to, you know, really help people with addiction for so long. Oh, right. But parents are getting out there and they're speaking to other children and mm -hmm. they're and they're supporting the um, halfway houses and the rehabs and right. um, having fundraisers. So there's so much happening now right. uh, in the world about addiction. So it's certainly helping parents to recover oh, and, and speak up more right. easily. Speak yeah. up and speak out and, and educate people educate. that, mm -hmm. like you said earlier, the disease of mm -hmm. addiction. Mm -hmm. I just think that so many people think it's, it's a choice you know, mm -hmm. maybe a choice to take that first drink or a choice to mm -hmm. smoke that first joint. Um, but when you have other issues underlying and, and addiction yes. becomes mm -hmm. prevalent, then it's no longer a choice. Yes. And it's so important that people watching understand, mm -hmm. grieving parents mm -hmm. understand that it is a disease. Yes. Um, so let's talk about that grief a little bit more. Um, there are stages of grief mm -hmm. in any circumstances, yes. whether it's the loss of a child or, or any other individual in the mm -hmm. family. Um, let's talk about those stages of grief, if you yeah. would. And you can see them uh, written in many forms. You can go from uh, uh, an article about four stages of, group, of grief up to ten stages of grief. But generally speaking, uh, the very first stage is that stage of denial, where I think our bodies keep us safe from the, the full impact of what just happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll hear people say, oh, I, I went to the funeral, I don't even remember, and mm -hmm. I don't remember who came and what we had mm -hmm. for lunch. And then for weeks, I couldn't, I didn't, couldn't remember anything, if I mm -hmm. paid my bills or did I do what I was supposed to do. So it's that period of time where we really, our brain keeps us safe. But as that starts to pass, then we move into a stage where we start to feel more. We start mm -hmm. to feel angry and we start to feel resentful and mm. we especially start to feel guilty for things mm -hmm. we've done or things we haven't done. Mm -hmm. And it's important for people to recognize that that's an occurrence in the stage of grief because mm -hmm. many people just think they're going crazy. They're, right. And they're just so filled with emotion that uh -huh. they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So even then that starts to temper. And mm -hmm. then we move into a stage where there's um, sadness and loneliness and a deeper emotional sense of loss. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, they don't always go in stages. They can fluctuate back and forth. Right, right. But um, that next stage of loneliness and depression uh, mm. is, is very uh, important to address because if you don't, you could get very stuck in that for years and years and mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. so that if... Um, you don't get the support you need, right. whether that's from your medical doctor or maybe even your, your spiritual director or from right. a supportive friend. Sure. You can spend years and years mm. in that stage. Next, and our loved ones wouldn't want that. No, no, no. no. Okay. And I'll tell you, the, the next stage is very difficult in that we finally realize mm. that this is for real, this is true, and our children will not be coming back. And right. that can be a very difficult period, too. Because sure, for the longest sure. time, we kind of play a game with each other, back and forth with emotions and feelings right. and ideas. Right. But when we reach this point, as healing as it really is, uh -huh. it can be very difficult when the reality really hits us. And I, and I found that to be true. Because when I, we first lost Nick, mm -hmm. that we were surrounded by so many loving and caring mm -hmm. friends and family. and. People would call up and, hey, you want to go to lunch, and mm -hmm. how are you doing, and the phone calls were coming, and the cards, and all the beautiful things were happening yeah. to make mm -hmm. us feel better, and then that stops. Yes. And people's life moves on, mm -hmm. and the world continues to turn, mm -hmm. but here we are, and to your point, you, you, your grief journey is mm. just beginning right. and we've talked about this and we are far from a point in our lives where we're just moving on mm. because it, it just doesn't happen that yeah. way yeah and um, mm. it's a hard place to move from yes yes right. but we hopefully can then move to a place of hope and 
find a new identity, a, a new identity for ourselves, and and find some healing and some relief. Okay. So there's always hope. Yeah. And how does one find that hope? So what are some of the ways that people find hope or have a new beginning mm. or yeah. even things to, how do they remember their loved one in a, a more, mm. like you say, a more loving, a positive way? Here mm. we are filled with this guilt and, and anger and you know, yes. denial and you know, we're angry at our loved ones. Heaven forbid, this is how it goes. Yes. And mm -hmm. why did he do this to us? Yeah. Or she yeah. do this to us? How? Mm -hmm. And you're just filled with, like you said, all these emotions. So, yeah. I think how certainly does that through education, mm -hmm. reading articles, talking with supportive other people, whether that's right. our clergy or our best friends, sure. or uh, recognizing when we really need to see a therapist, that helps us at least to understand what we're going through. Right. Um, and that can move us through the stages of grief. But especially at this time of the year, um, it's important that we honor our children sure. uh, at Thanksgiving to have that picture somewhere, mm -hmm. um, to have candles lit maybe around right. the picture. I know someone was saying last night in group that, oh my gosh, we have these dinners and nobody, nobody mentions their name. Right. And then right. we said, well, you mention the name. Right. You mention the name. You sure. remember your child, and sure. then people will come around because sure. they're they're so uncomfortable. They don't right. know what to say, and and they don't want to exactly. make you cry. Right. So right. you share your feelings. Right. You share an idea. Right. How fun it was to watch John always eat the turkey leg, or Marie to talk about how wonderful Thanksgiving was. Sure. You start the conversation, and then it helps to right. really open people. It's like an icebreaker. Yes. People tiptoe around, yes. and they're not sure what to say, how to say, how she going to respond. And like to your point. Oh, they don't want to make you cry. Yeah. Well, to their point, I could say to them, it doesn't matter because yeah. I'm going to cry anyway. Yeah. <laughs> whether, yes. you, whether you spark it in me or not, or there's always going to be those triggers, but yeah. I'll cry whether you speak his name or not. Yes. And it is so much more loving and caring, like you say, to speak their name, yes. to acknowledge their life, to say they were here yes. and they were part of this family and they did sit around our table sure. with us. Um, and you know, and if I could just say, sure. healing, um, crying and hugging mm -hmm. creates healing. It's an intimacy right. between two people. It's a sure. sharing of your sadness. Of, and it's a positive, it's a Absolutely. positive behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's so tough now. Yeah. We're in oh yeah, that's true. That's of COVID. true. Yeah. We're like hugging, you know, yeah. hugging. This yeah. is a virtual hug. Even yeah, we're even learning how to do that differently in these times. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, there's different ways, like you say, to honor your child, either with candles. I know people get memorial quilts made, which is is a wonderful thing. Yeah. And. Um, I've seen people come to group with like little ashes in a necklace maybe, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. that person is close to their heart always. Right. And this is Nicholas's uh, crucifix that mm -hmm. I carry with me all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And I know that he's there. Um, well, what about self-care? What mm -hmm. about parents, loved ones? How do they, what, what do we, what can we say about self-care for them besides yeah. you know group or yeah you know there's different strategies and different things we've talked about in group right. activities and things well first of all you have to keep yourself healthy you must take mm -hmm. care of yourself and that would be one of the indicators of uh, professional help being needed if someone was not taking care of themselves right certainly you're gonna have sleepless nights you're gonna be eating too mm -hmm. much not eating enough sleeping or not mm -hmm. sleeping exercising not exercising but when you notice too many days have passed mm -hmm. or when friends of yours notice that you're not looking yourself for a while or you're mm -hmm. not you're not bathing or, I mean things like that that's certainly um, mm -hmm. time for professional help or even when you notice yourself that you can't find any calmness in your brain right. or you're not noticing the beautiful things that you you used to notice sure I mean that's the time to really seek professional help or there are the therapeutic things I think people can do on their own. Uh, yeah. I know for myself, it's it's exercise. It's even if it's just walking. Mm -hmm. I, I 
do exercise um, quite a bit. Um, people get out in nature. I've been hearing that a lot because everybody's been stuck in the house with, yeah. with these quarantines and whatnot. That just even going out to a park, maybe that you never even knew was there, yeah. and just taking a walk or calling a friend and yeah. taking a walk. Yeah. Um, we've talked about journaling, yeah. meditation. Mm -hmm. Yes, meditation um, and deep breathing. breathing. And you can find a lot of information on YouTube videos. Ah, I really okay. suggest people, for many different reasons, to go on your uh, internet and find YouTube videos that talk about meditation mm -hmm. and recovering from grief and right. uh, breathing exercises. Sure. I mean, that's very, very helpful, all the things right. that you can find online. Sure. Wonderful reading material, mm -hmm. uh, that's always really helpful. Mm -hmm. Meditations, daily meditations right. can be really helpful. Right. Yeah. I know we've also done something, um, along with the journaling, we've done an exercise like write a letter Mm -hmm. to your loved one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And whatever bubbles up, mm -hmm. whatever comes to mind. And I know there are people in the group who journal yes. religiously mm -hmm. and or regularly, and they find that to be very helpful. Yeah. Um, and then what was the other piece to that, part B? Yes, is ha write a letter <laughs> of how your child would react to your letter, Answer. which is so amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. When you sit and you listen to what your son or your daughter would say to you. Right. Often in group we'll right. do that. Well, what right. would they say about that? Right. How would they want you to be? <laughs> right. That's so powerful. Oh, really. I, I absolutely believe yes. it is. Because I think, you know, we think about their life on this earth I know for myself, I think mm -hmm. of, of the torture um, that Nick experienced mm -hmm. with the addiction. As we know, someone doesn't wake up and say, hey, you know, I think I'll, I'll be addicted to that. I think yeah. I'll be an mm -hmm. addict and I'll cause all kinds of problems mm -hmm. in my, and chaos in my household yeah. and I'll torture my siblings and my parents. No, it doesn't happen that yeah. way. So mm -hmm. the way I try to see it is that they're free of the torture and the torment that they mm. went through on this earth. Yes. And, and again, that answer to that letter, I think, would be so different than as if he were here on earth in active addiction. Yes. Mm. Very healing. Suffering. Suffering. Mm -hmm. Absolutely suffering. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. So is there a time frame about grief? Let's talk about, you know, like, you know, what do we say? Like, let's hurry up and get through this. Mm. and. Oh, you, you're you got to move on now, and, yeah. and how does that happen with a time? Well, what, what is there a time frame? Yeah, we talk a lot about that in the group. There's really mm -hmm. no time frame, and depending to what you bring to the situation mm -hmm. of when it happens, sure. who am I? What's my emotional experience at that point? What's going on in my life? Has the person been living with us, or have mm. they been away? I mean, all right. of that affects the severity of the grief. Uh, sure. my relationship with them and how close it was. Right. Uh, so there's really no timeline. And we talk about that. There's no timeline right. and there's no perfect way to do this. No. There's, so whatever you think is important for you and how you do, you do that. And especially to understand that at the holidays. So oh. if you don't want to have a turkey, you don't have to have a turkey. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to have a Christmas tree, you don't have mm -hmm. a Chris Christmas tree. Right. And if you don't want to go visit all of your aunts and uncles, you don't have to do that. <laughs> we shouldn't be anyway, but yeah. well, that's true. <laughs> for that's safety's true. sake with yeah. COVID. But um, really, to right. really honor yourself and what's sure. going on with yourself and to know that you are in charge of your grief. Right. And we talk a lot about people saying dumb things to us <laughs> and having very odd expectations. Right. At three months, you're not going to be past this. No. At, uh, it's Christmas and you need to have a Christmas tree. Right. Well, or, or any of the other things they tell us that we right. must do. But right. it's on our own time. Well, that's because they're uncomfortable. Yes. You know, and, and no disrespect, they just cannot and do not understand yes. this magnitude of this yes. loss, not to, under, not to undermine any other grief or loss that anybody right. experiences, but just mm -hmm. The fact that you know th this was a loss like no other, um, you know, makes it yeah. That and all of the background that goes exactly. with it, you know, the years where right. you felt shame when you're, they saw your right. child high right. or whatever, right. or the years when you were you had to say they were missing because they were in jail, or all of the the right. things that go along sure. with this sure. ultimate point of their death. Well, we spared 
our families, all of that, yeah. like extended family. Like I'll mm. say even my parents knew very little mm. as to what was going on. Mm. I think they understood, they knew that it was a co-occurring, he had a co-occurring mm. disorder with mm. mental health, which is, which is very common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, the, the addiction piece was mm. not something mm. that I openly yeah. discussed. Yeah. really with anybody yeah and then it's those yeah. secrets that we keep sure. forever and ever right and then even after their passing we can't really talk about it right because they don't we're ashamed understand. or we're embarrassed they don't exactly. understand they'd be jump judgmental right and we wouldn't be comfortable right exactly we wouldn't be supported exactly Mm -hmm. So going back to our, our grief group, mm -hmm. um, we have a wonderful grief group. Mm -hmm. How are they, you touched on it a little bit earlier, they're beneficial to those on this same path and journey yes. of our grief. Um, I was very fortunate to find the group. So our one group is uh, called For Jonathan's Sake, mm -hmm. Beyond a Broken Heart. And that was started by uh, Pam Moles who also has a nonprofit called Steps for Hope, um, the Jonathan Moles Memorial Foundation, mm. which is a lovely, wonderful way to, you know, to tributize her son mm -hmm. and to help others that yeah. are struggling. And she, besides, for Jonathan's sake, that's for parents mm -hmm. of those who've lost their child. Mm -hmm. But then she also has another group that's facilitated by another professional. It's an online group called A Brother's Love. Mm -hmm. And that one is specifically for siblings. Yes. Because mm -hmm. they're they're a forgotten population in sure. all of this, yeah. aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. They have their own experiences. And again, the age right. of the child is significant. Sure. Sure. How we should handle that with them. Right. Um, and again, our fear of, oh my gosh, don't say anything because they're too young to hear. They're, you right. know what I mean? So that education right. and that forum for them to go and be able to speak openly so right. that I'm not hurting mom, I'm not right. hurting dad. Sure. But I can talk about my they have anger, a, a my place. frustration, my right. sadness, my loneliness. Right. Yeah. They have a place to go to talk to other right. siblings yeah. and a professional. Mm -hmm. And um, for the folks at home who would be interested in learning about any of these groups, uh, either one of our groups would be um, Pam Moles. Again, she's at Steps for Hope. Mm -hmm. And her cell phone number is 610-247-1920. And she could also be reached at email jmsteps, the number four, hope, mm -hmm. at gmail.com. And mm -hmm. um, she's doing wonderful things uh, yes. for mm -hmm. those who are grieving these losses. Mm -hmm. And um, let's just go back a little bit to... Um, recognizing again when mm. when we need we're in a group setting mm. and we're working through our group uh, our grief usually we're like an eight-week session I believe yes, we meet weeks. in the mm -hmm. fall and then typically again in the spring um, how would one know that they need one-on-one -on -one counseling mm -hmm. they're coming mm -hmm. to group you know they're kind of just going along yeah. with the group and the crowd and how mm -hmm. would you recognize someone mm -hmm. needs one-on-one -on -one counseling well I think visual mm -hmm. I mean all aspects of the person need to be addressed the physical the emotional the spiritual the social uh, and the cognitive so as I'm listening I would be hearing if the person isn't making any movement or if they right. continue to focus on thoughts that keep them stuck so that okay. would be an indicator okay uh, emotionally if um, you know they were they they expressed so deep emotions for such a long right. period of time and noticed that others were saying that mm -hmm. if again physically they weren't looking well or they talked about not eating and not sleeping okay. if they were drinking too much if no, people notice that drinking right. and maybe doing some uh, drugs themselves uh -huh. th that would be uh, an indicator okay. so at that point Mm -hmm. uh, group members many times will reach out right. and suggest things sure. or offer support. Right. Uh, or I myself, I often give my um, mm -hmm. my office phone number to people to feel please feel free to talk with me. And I've had people come in at just a few sessions, maybe to just to to help sure. them to move forward. Get them over and to her. know that they're allowed to move forward. That is the big question. And that's such a big point. Yeah. It is such a big point yes. that again our loved ones. It's just not existing. Yes. But they definitely want us 
to continue to live. Yes. And we have to find ways to do that. And it's not we easy. have to find ways it's to do that. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. So do you think, I mean, not to put a time frame on any of this, but do you think like after maybe about, let's say, 12 months, like a full mm -hmm. year has gone mm -hmm. by, mm -hmm. and let's say this person is stuck, Mm. Would that be a good time just to give a gauge? And I that know would, it was all dependent. Yeah, that would be a good time. And again, right. if the, the, the uh, symptoms were so severe, right. I would be hoping that if even three months or six months, someone would be mentioning some professional help. Or right. even just a medical uh, workup with a doctor sure. is important. Or right. if you haven't slept for a long period of time, maybe even a sleeping medication or some type of an herbal thing, depending on what, to take what it is that off, you do. Right. But you must be taking care of all of those sure. um, aspects of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. So important. Well, Nancy, this has been a wonderful, wonderful experience having you come here yeah. and talk with us today. Yeah. I know you've, you've helped me tremendously yeah, on my you. journey of yeah. grief. And if people wanted to get a hold of you to maybe explore some one-on-one -on -one counseling, how could they get a hold of you? I think uh, my office phone number will be uh, online after mm -hmm. this, and they could certainly reach me there. But if I could say anything, our group would want everyone to know that your children are always with you. Abs oh, absolutely. They are always with you, absolutely. and that's such a wonderful mm -hmm. feeling and, and hope when it you is. can uh, realize that. Yes. I do. Nick's on my shoulder all the yeah. time, mm -hmm. and I feel grateful and I feel blessed that he mm -hmm. continues to live on with me. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. thank you for joining us for this important discussion. I hope you've gained more insight and information about the importance of grief support through the unspeakable tragedy of losing, losing a child or loved one to substance abuse. I'm Brenda Shavito, and remember that you are not alone in this process. If you or a loved one needs help or would like to make a donation, please visit us anytime at angelsagainstaddiction.org. I believe that together we can help save lives. Thank you.